right now on 5 on your side at 10. Get it right, her. This the remix. St. Louis rapper Chingy trying to reach local kids in jail tonight. When I was 12, I was locked up here for three months for stealing cars. His plan to reach them and teach them. Jackets in the morning, shorts in the afternoon. The taste of autumn that puts a few of us in an early morning fog. But first tonight, a local town with a dissolved EMS department and no official plan to replace them. The uncertain future for 911 services. Story in just a moment. Good evening. I'm Ann Allred. Mike has the night off. Just hours ago, former prison inmate Bobby Bostick and a famous friend visited a local juvenile detention center. Our Robert Townsend is live downtown to tell us more about the duo's inspiring mission. Robert. Hey there, Ann. You know, the men tell me they're on a mission to reach teens who've made some bad choices. Bobby Bostick and Howard Bailey Jr., also known to his fans as rapper Chingy, admit nearly 30 years ago they were headed down the wrong paths. We used to hang together as kids. Both grew up in the Walnut Park neighborhood in North St. Louis, and both were troubled teens living fast lives and committing crimes. It's who you're growing up around, how they're affecting your life. Ten months ago, Bostic was released from prison after serving 27 years of what was supposed to be a 241-year sentence. He'd been behind bars since 1995 for an armed robbery he committed when he was 16 years old. After he was nearly shot twice, a 17-year-old Bailey gave up drugs and violence. That was a wake-up call because I almost died. Oh, oh, oh. Today, Chingy is a successful, world-renowned rapper and actor. Bostick's now an author, a nonprofit owner and speaker. We're just trying to get the kids so they can dif differentiate, you know, when you got goals and you got plans, you can go further in life. Wednesday afternoon, the two men took what they call life-saving messages to about two dozen teens at the juvenile detention center in St. Louis. They shared candid talks about crime. When I was 12, I was locked up here for three months for stealing cars. And encouraged the teens to not let their past mistakes rob them of their dreams. Because I lost my life at 16, and I don't want them to keep repeating mistakes that I uh, did as a child. They got to want to change. Now, these guys tell me they are in this for the long haul. Bostic has taken his positive messages to juvenile detention centers in the St. Louis area for the past eight months. Chingy's Foundation helps send high school graduates to college. Live downtown, I'm Robert Townsend. Five on your side. Two former Riverview Gardens high school students are stepping up after fights led administrators to cancel this weekend's homecoming festivities. There were fights inside and outside the school building yesterday. About 15 students were arrested, two had minor injuries. Today, we talked to two former students who are part of an organization helping with trauma. They're now trying to work with the school to help the students. When you have a few people that are showing up with anger, it changes the atmosphere. It becomes toxic. And if you're not addressing that in the right format, it's just going to continue to grow. Saturday's homecoming parade, pep rally and dance are canceled. Only football players and their families can attend the game. The school held remote learning today. Right now, administrators say the plan is to return to in-person learning on Monday. We could be just hours away from a strike that could cripple the U.S. auto industry. Tonight, the United Auto Workers are ready for a first-of-its-kind walkout at all big three automakers at once. That could include the GM plant in Wentzville. The current bargaining agreements expire tomorrow. The union is demanding a 46% raise, a four-day work week, and a return of pensions. The UAW says the automakers are now offering around a 20% raise. If we don't have a fair contract by midnight on Thursday night, we will strike. I mean, a four day work week is not containable. Uh, we're, we're literally fighting for the future of automotive manufacturing in our country. The UAW says a strike will be what it calls a stand up strike. That means just a portion of its roughly 146,000 auto workers walk off the job at specific facilities. Tonight, an infant continues to be treated for smoke inhalation in the hospital more than 24 hours after this house fire in University City. 
Five other children were rescued from the fire last night on Etzel Avenue. Firefighters believe it started from a child playing with paper on a stove. The Red Cross is helping the family. A St. Charles County man sentenced to the death for killing his girlfriend and three family members was sentenced to an additional 210 years in prison today. Richard Emery has already been sentenced to death for the 2018 killings of Kate Caston, her two children, Zoe and Jonathan, and her mother, Jane Mokel. Today's sentencing was for crimes he committed right after the murders. Emery stabbed a woman during a carjacking and exchanged gunfire with St. Charles police. Also tonight, we're learning more about why St. Louis prosecutors agreed to a plea deal with a man charged in connection with his wife's fatal fall from a downtown parking garage. Bradley Jenkins will serve two years of probation for misdemeanor domestic assault, stemming from the 2019 death of his wife, Alyssa Martin. The couple got into a fight at the Stadium East garage while leaving a Cardinals game. The city's top prosecutor tells Five on Your Side the evidence did not show he shoved her to her death. It's been a three-year investigation and prosecution for a reason, so I would suggest to the public that no stone was left unturned. They can feel secure in that fact and that, in fact, the plea agreement that was reached reflects the highest charge that the evidence would support. Martin's mother has filed a civil suit against the parking garage and Jenkins. She alleges her daughter was running from Jenkins when she fell. Tonight, the Fire Protection Board in Pocahontas, Illinois, isn't any closer to making a decision about the future of their emergency medical services after another very heated meeting to try and discuss the options. Pocahontas is a town with about 800 people located 45 minutes east of St. Louis. Five on your side's Laura Barczewski was there for tonight's contentious debate. It was a heated meeting Wednesday evening as the clock is ticking. The Pocahontas Old Ripley Fire Protection Board only has one emergency medical technician left, and they only have until October 1st to make a decision about a commercial ambulance service. The board says they do not have the money to supply ambulance services themselves anymore, pointing to a lack of reimbursement from insurance companies. They're looking at two proposals. One option would be to station advanced life support services paramedics at the station for 12 hours during the day, and they would respond from neighboring town Greenville in the evening. The other option would be to have an ambulance service stationed at the firehouse 24 hours a day, but they could only provide basic life support. Right now, their staff is only basic life support. If we have a serious injury, which is about half of our calls, we have to call for advanced life support and they meet us halfway between Greenville or Highland, whichever hospital we're going to, and their paramedic jumps on our truck. That usually takes anywhere from eight to 10 minutes. Some residents are not confident in the way the process is being handled and are concerned about one of the company's proposals. One of the volunteer firefighters says they currently work with that company called Rural Med and have had issues with response times. Sunday morning, Rural Med was supposed to be here, right? Okay. They weren't. We timed it and it took them 45 minutes from the time they were paged to get to File Avenue. A local state representative also presented an option that all Illinois residents can take advantage of next year. Towns can join together to create a new ambulance district that's supported by a tax increase put in front of the voters to help solve this problem happening statewide. The board here in Pocahontas will have another meeting next Thursday. Reporting in Pocahontas, Laura Barczewski, five on your side. Tonight, a slimmed down state budget for the show me state. During today's veto session in Jefferson City, Missouri lawmakers failed to override some of Governor Mike Parson's hefty cuts to the Missouri stipending plan. The governor vetoed $555 million of the $51 billion budget passed by the state legislature back in June. The future is now. Concerns over artificial intelligence was the focus of a closed-door meeting on Capitol Hill today between big tech CEOs and U.S. Senators. As Alice Barr reports, critics are calling it a photo op. From Elon Musk to Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates and Sam Altman of ChatGPT, the biggest names in tech gathering on Capitol Hill today for a debate on one of the biggest tools and trials of our times, the growing role of artificial intelligence. The consequences of AI going wrong are, are severe, um, so we have to be proactive rather than reactive. 
Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer and Republican Mike Rounds leading the first in a series of AI insight forums about how Congress can regulate the fast-moving industry. Putting guardrails in place to deal with issues like bias and work, worker education and jobs. AI is not going away. It's going to be here for a long, long time. Since ChatGPT burst onto the scene late last year, demonstrating AI's ability to closely mimic human conversation, the world of artificial intelligence has raised powerful possibilities and existential angst. Dr. Alex Alonzo studies the impact of AI on the workforce. The ability of, that AI has to uh, economize, to make things more efficient, and to automate specific processes, it certainly has an impact. Workers should do their best to actually develop the skills so they don't find themselves in that position. Democratic Senator Elizabeth Warren and Republican Lindsey Graham are pushing legislation to create a new tech regulating federal agency. These giants aren't just big, they are big and they kill competition. And that means they kill innovation. Rare bipartisan agreement about the need for AI guardrails as leaders eye the potential impacts on everything from spreading disinformation to national security. From Capitol Hill, Alice Barr, NBC News. There was bipartisan criticism that this meeting was held behind closed doors. All senators were invited, but not all were allowed to ask questions. Some argued this gave tech giants a chance to lobby lawmakers without being challenged. Aw, 2023 is Adam Wainwright's swan song, and after performing the national anthem on opening day, he is preparing to sing for Cardinals fans once again. It is all part of his retirement celebration during the team's last homestand. It all begins on Friday, September 29th, with a special theme ticket t-shirt. On Saturday, Wayna will perform three new songs after the game. Then on Sunday, October 1st, there's a pregame retirement ceremony. The first 25,000 fans, 16 and older, will take home a Wayno themed guitar. From Hollywood to Manchester, the big star giving a big boost to a dedicated police officer battling breast cancer. I can't even start to start th saying thank you. Winter is coming, but relief at the pump may not. Tonight, we're helping you make ends meet with the three things you can do to get more mileage out of each tank of gas. Some relief, though, for your electric bill. We're in that sweet time where both the furnace and the air conditioner can get a break. How long this lasts and if we can get some badly needed rainfall anytime soon. Relief tonight in Pennsylvania. A convicted murderer who broke out of jail and evaded police for nearly three weeks is back behind bars. Danello Cavalcante was captured this morning in a wooded area about 20 miles from the jail where he escaped. He's now being held at a maximum security state prison to serve his life sentence for the murder of his girlfriend. Tonight, police are investigating a homicide in Troy, Illinois. It happened in the 600 block of Lower Marine Road. Investigators say a woman in her 60s was found dead inside a home. Her identity and a cause of death have not been released. The new COVID booster should be available by the end of the week. Both the CDC and FDA signed off this week. Doctors offices, hospitals and major pharmacies like Walgreens and CVS have already started scheduling appointments. Federal health officials are recommending everyone aged six months and older to get one, preferably before the end of October. The CDC says Americans are now more protected than ever heading into the respiratory virus season. This will be the first season where we'll have a vaccine for COVID, RSV, and flu. That's important because up until now, the notion had been that, that COVID controlled our lives. This is the year that the tables can turn. Last year, only 17% of those eligible to receive last year's booster got the shot. The rate of inflation was back on the rise last month. The Bureau of Labor Statistics reported consumer prices were up 3.7 percent compared to last August. It's the biggest monthly gain of the year. Sharply higher gas prices drove inflation up, but food and other energy prices saw their smallest increase in nearly two years. Drivers felt the pinch at the pumps last week during the Labor Day weekend as gas prices neared historic highs for that travel period. So does the end of the busy summer driving season mean relief at the pumps? Analysts say 
it may not be a quick fall for prices. Michelle Lee looks at the road ahead in tonight's Making Ends Meet. You probably know this, but gas prices change every day. And if you're like me, and you have to get the gas to get from point A to point B, you might not be using a lot of energy to think about ways to save money. Well, turns out though, this is the time when gas does tend to get cheaper because of the winter blend. A winter blend is a little bit cheaper to produce. We'll see prices come down anywhere from 10 to 15 cents because of that switch over. Nonetheless, AAA says because crude oil prices are going up, it's making the season very unpredictable. We're seeing crude oil prices uh, at their highest level uh, that we've seen all year. Expectations are now that the Saudis and Russians are cutting oil production for the next several months. And you know, there are also ways to save money on gas without tracking prices. First of all, take a look at your car. See if you can lighten the load because that will absolutely save money. If they're running errands, try to run all your errands in one trip rather than going back and forth to home, uh, cutting down on miles. And another way to save money is to make sure that your car is always serviced, especially keeping your tires in good shape. That's all going to make sure your vehicle is getting the most uh, fuel economy that it can. Nonetheless, though, if you do want to track, AAA has made it very easy for you. AAA has an app. We've also made it easy. You can text the word gas to 314-425-5355, and we will send you a link with the cheapest gas prices in your area. For Making Ends Meet, Michelle Lee, five on your side. If there is a silver lining, it's that AAA says Missouri is one of the least expensive states to buy gas. And on most days, St. Louis tends to be cheaper than Kansas City. A boost tonight for a Manchester police officer battling stage three breast cancer. Thanks to a Hollywood star and the community, the Gary Sinise Foundation presented Sergeant Meredith Absalon with a grant to help cover her health care costs. The actor's organization helps veterans, first responders and their family. Sergeant Absalon says she's overwhelmed by the support. I never thought I'd be here. I, sometimes I don't feel like I earn this and just taking it all in. The nonprofit learned about Sergeant Absalon's cancer fight through a GoFundMe page her colleagues created. We have a link in the As Seen on TV section at KSDK.com. It can be one of the most beautiful times of year, leaves turning those vibrant oranges, reds, and yellows. But this year, brown could dominate. Botanists at the Missouri Botanical Garden blame recent drought conditions. We're seeing it in some of our trees. Uh, they got a little scorched with that last heat wave we had with the high humidity and temperatures. And so a lot of trees have dropped a few leaves uh, as a result. And also with the drought, they may be also dropping more leaves now too. So we may not see as much fall color later on. Leave watchers, not all hope is lost. Botanists say there are still some trees that got enough rain or shade to put on a colorful show next month. And let's get to Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell. Usually, I feel like it's kind of late October that we have our big mm -hmm. color weekend, right? It's really, it really is towards the end of October and heading into that first weekend of November when it seems like we're right around peak color. But this year, you know, rain has been, just, just depending on where you are, some of us have seen some decent rainfall. Others of us have really struggled for much of the summer now into September. Since the 1st of June, we're just under a foot officially in St. Louis, but because we deal with thunderstorms, those numbers vary across the region. But since the beginning of the year, almost six inches below average. Now, Roy sent this picture in. You know, with the dry weather we're having right now, this is down towards Bourbon, an area that was extremely dry going into May and June. And then there was some rain and now they're able to get at least a second cutting of hay. As far as the uh, rain chances heading into this upcoming weekend, not much. There'll be a little bit, we think, as we head into Saturday evening, overnight Saturday night, gone by Sunday morning. It's not going to amount to much around the St. Louis area. Notice St. Louis. You're looking at those hourly temperatures there. We actually have a few little clouds drifting in from the north and we got a boost. We went up a couple of degrees in St. Louis. Those clouds are not in Chesterfield. They're not in DeSoto or Sullivan. And so we have temperatures there that have fallen back into the 50s where we have a few clouds. Temperatures are above 60 degrees right now. The air is dry. Dew points 52, so we won't get any rain out of any of those clouds. 84 our high today 56 was the low again it's 75 now we do think it's mostly clear overnight in general again in some of the river valleys we're going to drop back into that 47 48 degree range could start out with a little bit of fog tomorrow morning but listen after that 
It is bright. It's beautiful. We're back around 80 into the low 80s tomorrow afternoon. Heading into the weekend, our only chance for rain will come from the north and west late Saturday into Saturday evening. A scattered spot shower. And that's about it. This is a system that's really limited with the amount of moisture it has available and any rain chance shifts quickly away from the by state region going into Sunday. That's going to push our temperatures just a hair cooler. Now we're still tracking a hurricane tonight. Lee out in the Atlantic. It is now about 345 miles to the south southwest of Bermuda. Bermuda is going to get tropical storm force winds with this, but it's a big wind field and even though the storm itself is not strengthening, it's weakening and will continue to weaken. It very well is going to impact parts of New England, and there's a hurricane watch right now across portions of the Northeast, and that includes from about Bar Harbor, Maine, on up to the main Canadian border. Here's a look at your next 10 days. There's not much to talk about here weather-wise, as bright skies and pleasant afternoons will be with us right through Friday. Thank you, Scott. We're following breaking news right now out of St. Charles. We understand one person is dead after a house fire. Fire crews were called to a home on North Benton Avenue. Multiple units are there battling this three alarm fire. The St. Charles County Ambulance District is telling us the victim was the only person in the home at the time. We'll bring you any overnight developments on the Five in Your Side app, also on today in St. Louis tomorrow morning, beginning at 4 a.m. Coming up in sports, two Cardinal players, perhaps only known by their families, were fabulous tonight on Frankly Speaking. We honor my favorite Cardinal, plus one of the best female basketball players in the world is from our town. Those stories next. The Sports Desk is sponsored by Jim Butler Chevrolet, the Midwest's number one Chevy dealer, 10 years running. Let me tell you how crazy this season is for the Cardinals. With a franchise with 11 world championships, their two heroes tonight are players that no one in St. Louis had ever heard of until a month ago. Drew Rahm started his season pitching for the Norfolk Tides, and Richie Palacios began his year with the Columbus Clippers. Let's go to Baltimore. Here he is, Drew Rahm, 23 years old, came over in the Jack Flaherty trade, and he came out firing. Rahm was out of sight against a good offense. We're talking five and a third scoreless innings, seven Ks, and just two hits. In the fourth, well, it was that man again, Richie Palacios. He won the game last night with two homers. Tonight, he won it with one homer. That's 395 feet, 1-0 cards. He's 5'10 and just 180 pounds. And Ryan Helsley came on throwing slightly faster than Scott Connell drives his Pinto. 100 miles an hour. Cards win one nothing, and they have a 6-3 and three road trip. St. Louis and Max Scherzer has likely thrown his last pitch this season. He had to come out of last night's start against Toronto with spasms in his tricep area. He's been complaining of tightness in his arm for the past few starts, and an MRI showed a strain in his shoulder. Too bad for the Rangers. They began the night a game back at Houston in a tight race in the AL West. Here's a pitcher who's never hurt. Be with us Sunday night for Sports Plus for the story of Kent Weisenstein. He's 85 years old and still pitching. Since he was 12 years old, he's thrown at least 20 games a summer. 73 years, and the venerable lefty is not retiring soon. I hope to pitch when I'm 90. I bet I, the, the man upstairs will control that. But at this point, the way I feel and everything with the arm, I don't know that there's a problem. I think when I get to 90, I, I might be able to do it. WNBA playoffs, Minnesota versus UConn. If he's a cow, you're the pride of incarnate word, and what a season she's had. Gino Ariema in the stands, watching his former star. Nafisa is one of the best players in the world. Fourth in scoring, seventh in rebounding in the league. Not enough tonight. Connecticut beats Minnesota 90 to 60 in game one. Nafisa had 14 points. Finally tonight, a word about Wilson Contreras. Not many had a more brutal beginning to a Cardinal career than Wilson. He didn't hit and was blamed for everything from the pitchers getting hit to excessive crime in St. Louis. He was embarrassed by the organization too as they actually went public with what they perceived his issues were in handling a pitching staff. Well, you can't blame Wilson for Jack Flaherty anymore. Flaherty can't get anybody out in Baltimore either. And don't even think about saying Wilson messed up Miles Michaelis and Adam Wainwright. The last time I checked, 
they're the ones throwing the pitches. And the hitting, well, consider this. He has the highest OPS post-All-Star game for catchers in all of Major League Baseball. It's a story of resilience. He could have caved, instead he has crushed it. I love the Wilson Contreras story. And that will do it in sports. That is all of our time for Five on Your Side at 10. The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon is next. Please start your day with today in St. Louis beginning at 4 a.m. Thanks for being with us and have a great tomorrow.